In this section, we're going to go over some properties of functions. And the first property that we're going to talk about is intervals of increase and decrease. And when looking for these intervals, the question you want to ask yourself is, are the y values increasing or decreasing when reading from left to right? So when you take a graph of a function, you have to read it from left to right when you're looking for these intervals. That's pretty crucial. A lot of students screw up at that part. So let's show this through an example. So here we have the parent function x squared, and I drew the graph, and we want to find what the intervals of increase and decrease are. So how we do that is we read from left to right, so we go from the left of the function to the right of it and see whether the y values are increasing or decreasing. So moving from the outermost left to right, you can tell that the y values are decreasing up until this x value of 0. So there's an interval of decrease when the x values are less than 0. So here we can put when x is less than 0, the function is decreasing. You can also show this in interval notation. So from negative infinity to an x value of 0, the function is decreasing. So either way works. Another thing I want you to notice is how I didn't make 0 inclusive. So I didn't say that the function is decreasing when x is less than or equal to 0. And I didn't put a square bracket here because that would mean that it's inclusive of 0. And the reason why I didn't include 0 in both is because if you notice at an x value of 0, it's a minimum point. It's neither increasing or decreasing. So it's not part of these intervals, so we don't make it inclusive. So continuing to read this graph from left to right after 0, what happens? Notice how the y values are getting bigger. So the function is increasing when x is greater than 0. So here we would put the interval of increase is when x is greater than 0. If we want to show this in interval notation from 0 to positive infinity, it will, uh, it will increase, right? It increases forever after 0. And again, as we did here, notice how we didn't make 0 inclusive because that's a minimum point and it's neither increasing or decreasing at that point. Let's do another example. So I got this function y is equal to 1 over x minus 3. And I graphed it here. So at an x value of 3, there is a vertical asymptote. And let's figure out what the intervals of increase and decrease are. So as we did in the previous example, we read from left to right. So moving from left to right, notice how the y values are getting smaller for this portion of the graph. So from negative infinity, from an x value of negative infinity to an x value of 3, the function is decreasing. So when x is less than 3, or another way to write it, from negative infinity to positive 3, the function is decreasing. And then again, notice that we didn't make it inclusive of 3 because at an x value of 3, the function is undefined. And continuing to read from left to right after an x value of 3, notice how the function, again, is decreasing. The y values are getting smaller for when x is greater than 3. So that's also a interval of decrease. So when x is greater than 3, and that goes on forever. So from an x value of 3 to positive infinity, the function is decreasing. So notice how this function is always decreasing. There are no intervals of increase for this reciprocal function. And let's do a final example here. So y is equal to 2 to the power of x, an exponential function. If you graph it, it looks like this. So let's figure out what the intervals of increase and decrease are. And notice when you read this function from left to right, so from negative infinity to positive infinity, the y values are always increasing. So over the entire domain, the function is increasing. So 
basically the interval of increase is x is an element of real numbers. So for all x values, the function is increasing all the time. And if we write this in interval notation, basically from negative infinity to positive infinity, it's always increasing and there are no intervals of decrease. Now, one more point I wanna make before finishing this video, I wrote the note up here, but you could write it anywhere on your notes. Basically, these intervals of increase and decrease, notice how they're always written in terms of x values. So, when we're looking for intervals of increase or decrease, we're looking whether the y values are increasing or decreasing, but when we actually write the intervals, it's always in terms of the x values. Okay, so the x values, x values, x values. There is, you never describe or you would never write intervals of increase or decrease in terms of y values. They're always written in terms of the domain.